Welcome back to the Britannia Coin Company. We're a coin dealer based in Royal Wootton Bassett in the UK. Now recently I came across an item that was a very interesting shape and it's been on my mind a little bit so I wanted to show it to you and I thought what better than to make a video looking at some oddly shaped coins. We're so used to coins being circular or circular-ish that finding coins that are a different shape is quite fun. So I had to dig through our boxes of foreign coins which we sell as kilo wear or we sell by weight to collectors to hunt through. I'll pop some links down in the description if you'd like to take a look at that product offering, but here's what I found. First, let's look at some scalloped coins. A scalloped coin is one that has an edge with a series of curves that are repeated, almost like a flower. We start with a $10 coin from Jamaica, minted in the year 2000. This coin is made of nickel plated steel. This means the inner part of the coin is steel with a layer of nickel over it. Lots of countries are turning to this to reduce material costs of coins. On the reverse you can see the portrait of George W. Gordon, a famed businessman and politician who is executed following the Morant Bay Rebellion and he became a symbol of Jamaican nationalism against colonial oppression. On the reverse you can see this beautiful coat of arms of Jamaica. Next up we have a stunning Maltese 3 Mills coin from 1976. The quality is amazing considering the coin is 46 years old. On the obverse you can see a bee on some honeycomb, a nod to the Maltese honeybee which made a comeback in 1992 but were present at the time of ancient Greeks, with the Greeks calling the island Melita, translating as honey sweet which could be the origin of the name Malta. On the reverse you can see the denomination surrounded by a wreath of vine leaves. This coin was designed by famed coin designer Christopher Ironside. This coin is made of aluminium, another cost saving material. We come to Tanzania now with this 1977 10 centi. This is a nickel brass coin equivalent to 0 0.000000 33 Great British Pounds. On the reverse you can see a zebra surrounded by the denomination. This is again a design by Christopher Ironside. I promise I didn't just pick designs by him. On the obverse you can see Julius Nereri, who was president of the newly formed Tanzania from 1964 to 1985, having governed it prior to it becoming what we know now as Tanzania. Our next coin is a five fills from Iraq, minted in 1975 in stainless steel, with 94.8 million made that year. On the obverse is the denomination five in Arabic, with lettering above. There was a similar design that was released for the Food and Agricultural Organization or FAO, which is a specialist agency within the United Nations working to rid the world of hunger. On the reverse we have a stunning view of palm trees with the ears in Arabic either side. This design of coin was minted both at the Royal Mint in the UK and then later at the Royal Canadian Mint. Our penultimate scalloped coin is a nickel brass 10 cents from Ceylon, which we now know as Sri Lanka. Minted in 1944 to a tune of 30 and a half million of them. On the obverse you can see King George VI who was King of Ceylon. UK monarchs featured on the coinage of Ceylon until its independence in 1948. On the reverse we have the denomination, the date and the name of the country. Below that we have lettering which translates as 10 cents. The sixth and final scalloped coin is this one. This is a 10 Pruta, minted in 1953. It's made of aluminium and there was a little over 26 million minted. On the obverse is a jug surrounded by palm leaves. Above and below the wording translates as Israel. The design is inspired from a coin from the Bar Kokhba revolt, a rebellion by Jews against the Roman Empire between the years 132 and 136. On the reverse sits the denomination between olive branches with text which translates as 10 Pruta. Next up I have three circular coins but with holes in the middle of them. There are a couple of reasons some coins have holes in them, initially because some coins were cast rather than being struck and there would have been a rod placed in the middle so that they wouldn't roll around. They were also easily strung together rather than being placed into a pocket or wallet. Nowadays it's more of a design style though. Our first coin is a 1908 Belgian 25 centimes, made of copper nickel with just over 4 million made. The obverse features the royal monogram of King Leopold II with the date below. On the reverse is the denomination and an olive sprig flanking the central hole. We go now to Spain with this 1992 25 pesetas, 
On the obverse is a stunning sphere and a symbol of the 1992 Expo held in Seville. On the reverse is the Torre de Oro, which is a watchtower in Seville, originally built in 1220 but restored and reconstructed over time. You can also see a crowned M, which is the mint mark for the Royal Madrid Mint. This coin is made of aluminium bronze, an interesting alloy we haven't seen so far. The coin itself has a mintage of almost 180 million. Our final circular coin with a hole in it is this five pound coin from Guernsey. Now this wasn't from our random world coin boxes, but when I told our photographer what I was doing, she had this coin, which is being photographed for our eBay shop. So I thought I'd include it as well. This is a silver commemorative coin rather than a circulating one. The reverse depicts a rising sun surrounding the central hole with the year of mintage 1999 below. There were only 50,000 of these coins minted. On the obverse, you can see a tiny fifth portrait of the queen to the bottom with the country of the coin and name of the queen minted around the hole. From circles with holes to distinctively non-circular shaped coins, I have some square coins now. Firstly, a two cent coin from the East Caribbean States, which is an organization of island nations in the east of the Caribbean, with its capital in St. Lucia. On the reverse is the denomination between palm tree fronds. On the obverse, we have a young portrait of the queen by Arnold Mation. She features on these coins as eight out of the 11 members of the East Caribbean States have her as queen and head of state. Two coins next, both from India. The coin to the left is a copper nickel five Naya Pesa, or New Pesa, which was part of the Indian decimalization of currency in 1957. Below the date is a tiny diamond, which is a mint mark. With many mints across India making coins, this diamond identifies this coin as having been made in Mumbai. To the right is another five Pesa, but much more recently made in 1991. The mint mark below the year was hard to discern on this one, but it is a star, which identifies this coin as having been made in Hyderabad. On the obverse, you can see Asoka pillars, iconic Indian symbols created by Emperor Asoka between 268 and 232 BCE. These were constructed throughout India with 20 originals still standing. Now this is a one cent from the Straits Settlement. This was a group of British territories in Southeast Asia from 1826 to 1946. This is a bronze coin with 55 million minted in 1920. On the obverse is a crowned King George V with the wording of George V, King and Emperor of India surrounding his portrait. The coin would have been minted in India in modern day Calcutta. The final square coin is from Malaya, which was formerly part of the previous Straits settlements until 1941, when it was invaded during World War II by the Japanese. Although occupying forces issued their own currency, the wider British territories still had these coins minted throughout the war, with 50 million made in 1943. The governance and political situation in this part of the world is fairly complex, but after the Second World War, Malaya was returned to British administration, and then by 1957 had achieved independence and would go on to become what we now know as Malaysia. Now that's a very concise overview, I could do a whole video on that situation. We're going to round off with two more interesting coins. Firstly, we return to Jamaica. This is a one cent from 1990. This coin is 12 sided, making this coin dodecagonal, the same as our current one pound coin. However, this coin is much thinner than the one pound coin, making it feel at least to me rather odd. It is also aluminium, so a lot lighter than the one pound coin that we know. On the reverse, the design is an archi fruit tree with wording, let us produce more food, as this is an FAO, or Food and Agricultural Organization coin. Now, I had never heard of the Aki fruit tree, but the fruit is used in Jamaican cuisine. The tree has its origins in West Africa, and samples were brought back to the Botanical Gardens at Kew in 1793. Now, I suggest you have a Google, if you've not heard of the fruit, but they almost look like peppers that open into quarters when ripened, revealing these dark black seeds, bigger than a marble, but smaller than a golf ball. And it's the soft cream colored flesh under the seed that you eat. If you have ever had an archi fruit, then do let me know down in the comments what it tastes like, because I'm fascinated. On the obverse of the coin, you can see the Jamaican coat of arms, the wording on the ribbon below translating as out of many, one people. The coin is another Christopher Ironside design, with the design beginning production in 1975 all the way through to 2002. The final coin we will look at today is this coin, which is 10-sided, making it decagonal. 
It is again from the East Caribbean states with a value of one dollar and minted in 1995. The reverse has a ship on it, more specifically the Golden Hind, a galleon captained by Francis Drake in 1577, which features on the rest of their coinage and also on the UK pre-decimal halfpenny. On the obverse you can see another young portrait of Queen Elizabeth II. This coin was struck at the Royal Mint in Clan Trissant and is a rather common coin. The last item I want to show you is the item which sowed the seed for this video into my mind. It is not a coin per se, but rather a temple token from between 1526 and 1857. These tokens were used in a variety of ways, from being offerings to gods at temples, kept by devotees to signify important pilgrimages, or simply as lucky charms. Whatever the use, they would have been an important revenue stream for the temples themselves. They come in a whole variety of metals, with this one being silver. On the obverse you can see the Muslim Declaration of Belief, with the names of the first four caliphs in the corners. On the reverse you can see further Persian inscriptions. This would have been made during the Mughal Empire, an early Islamic empire in South Asia, which ruled the land we now refer to as India between 1526 and until 1857, making this total anywhere between 150 to almost half a millennia old, which really blows my mind. Sadly, these are heavily counterfeited with modern base metal replicas, so you really need to be careful when buying these. But it is a really beautiful coin, given its age, the detail and the beauty of this design really jumped out to me. Well, that was a fascinating look at some really interestingly and weird shaped coins. Do let me know down in the comments which was your favourite coin from today. Personally, I would possibly pick the Temple Token or the Jamaican One Cents, purely because I've now learned the Aki Fruit Tree. Also let me know what's the weirdest shaped coin that you've ever come across. There are some really fascinating examples out there which I'm sure in the future we can return to. Now don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Subscribing is free to do and means you won't miss any of our future videos. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook where we post lots of images of our products. We're on Twitter and TikTok. There's our shop on online store you can check out. But I'll see you next time for more amazing coins from the Britannia Coin Company.